Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Monday 2 o'clock edition of our Christmas songs for the advanced classes. And uh, today we will be doing one of the versions of I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. Yep. So don't forget, keep yourself muted when you can. And there are two, actually two versions of this song. The, the words were written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Now, how long ago was that? 1863. That's a pretty long time ago. Um, and it was actually in the middle of the Civil War when he wrote this. So if that date sounded familiar, because it is the Civil War. Um, music was set to it in 1872 in two different arrangements. One of them was by John Baptiste Calkin, and that's the original one, and that's the one we're going to work on today. And the other one was uh, adopted by Johnny Marks, and he did some different music. And that was actually 1956, and it was recorded by Bing Crosby. And he's the one that made it famous. Now, that's the one I'm going to play first. That's not the one we're going to do today. I just want you to hear the difference between the two. So if you have the Marks version, that's not the one we want today. If you have the Culkin version, you're right on the money. But I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Oh, boy, I'm not even sure where to put it. Oh, let's put it on Strings 101, which is a fabulous background. And we're going to put it at 85. Why? Because I can. Then I'm going to go to the moor, and I'm going to go to the bells. And we'll just take bells number one. All right, so here we go. This is not the one we're going to work on. This is the other one, the Bing Crosby version. That's the one that Bing Crosby made famous in 1956. Guess what? That's not the one we're doing. So <laughs> but I just wanted you to hear the differences between the two so you know that there actually are two different versions. The original one, and remember, this was written during the Civil War. The original one is the one, another one that you might recognize. And I did a special arrangement of this. So this is also going to help us learn to use. I've got a whole page like this for you guys. So it's going to help us learn to use all the buttons on our instrument. So take notes. And yes, I have lots and lots of chords to fill in. So, but I'm going to play it for you first. And I do have it all set up on my presets. So here we go on this one. This one is the John Baptiste Calkin.
Okay, and then it needs to be tweaked for each organ, and my apologies for having a, a um, when I got to the top of the second page, I had an uneven, oops, somebody else trying to get in, Miss Jeanette. I had a very uneven transition, but that's because I have a tendency to lean on the FX, and sometimes it's too much, and in this case it was a little bit too much. I should have just gone straight to the preset, and it would have been a little bit smoother. But you heard a lot of different changes in here because we actually changed rhythms. We actually started with our general presets because for Christmas, what's the number one sound? Bells. So we tried to use some bells. We also used some bells and we padded them with some strings as well. But as you can see, you don't have to use bells for absolutely everything. Um, chimes are considered a good bell. And I also used a violin and some orchestration um, that was the chamber orchestra. But I just took them all from presets. Most of you have all of these presets. So that's, it should be a nice, easy way to find some stuff. And then just save them into your presets and go right down the line so that all you have to do is push buttons. All right, so let's do some extra chords first and then we'll go through what I actually did with the arrangement. And remember, it's just a place, it's a way for you to get started and then you can make your own arrangement with some of your own sounds. This is just a way to copy what I have as a guide to get you started. And you can say, oh, I hate what she did here. Let me fill in with this and this and this. But it's going to get you pushing the buttons on your instrument. And that's what this lesson is about. Okay, extra chords, here we go. The F is good for three counts. That measure, third beat, put in a C diminished. C diminished is C and F sharp. The C next to it, you can put a seven on it if you wish. C and B flat. Beat four over the B natural put in a D diminished, dinosaur diminished. And your two notes on that are D and A flat. Remember the rules for diminished? It's always the letter plus six. The F is good for the entire measure. Line two, put a seven on the C if you wish. That makes it a C and B flat for three counts. Beat four over the C for the word and. Put a plain old F, fish. Next measure, cross out the F and replace it with B flat. B flat, butterfly flat, for two counts. Beat three over the A for sweet. Put in an F. Here comes Beverly. Get her in. Plain old F over the A. The next measure, you may put a seven on the A, which is G and A. The D minor is good for one count. Beat four over the G, put a G seven. G seven. Okay, the next line, the first measure, we're gonna have one chord per note. They're easy ones though. Over the A is the F, that's already there for you. Over the B flat, put a B flat. Over the C, F, go back to the F. And over the D, G minor, or G minor seven. The D minor is good for two counts. If you wish, you may put a seven on the C. Okay, the F is good for three counts. The last A of that measure, of that line, put a C diminished, C and F sharp. This is pretty much just a repeat. Line four, make the C a C7, C and B flat for three counts. Beat four over the B, put a D diminished. D diminished is D and A flat. The F is good for one measure. The C in the last measure, you may put a seven on it.
The last note of the page, over the C for half, put a plain old F. Let's go to the top of the page. Cross out the F and replace it with B flat, butterfly flat, for two counts. Beat three. Over the A for long, put your F back in. Next measure, put a seven on the A. The D minor is good for one note. Beat four over the G, put a G, make it a G7. The next measure, one chord per note. The F is good, that's the one that's there. Over the B flat, put a B flat. Over the C, go back to the plain old F. And over the D, G minor, gorilla minor, or G minor 7, which would be F, G, and B flat. You may put a 7 on the C, which would be C and B flat. The F is, we're going to hold that F for two counts. And then we're going to add a measure. The next F, I want you to put a measure line in between the two Fs. Right after goodwill to men, put a measure line. That F is going to finish the measure. And that next F, I want you to put a sharp in front of it. I know it's kind of hard, so it might have to go kind of on top of it. But we're going to play an F sharp. And over that note, put a D7 chord. And you're actually going to make that for three counts. At the end of that measure that we're, we're writing an extra measure is what we're doing. Is that a D7 or G7, you said? D as in dinosaur. OK, thank you. Yep. And then the last note of that new measure that we're writing is going to be an F quarter note, an F quarter note. And you should put an NC over that. And instead, stupid me played the FX, and it just ruined everything because we're going, we're going to be going to a whole different rhythm. All right, second line over the A for in, put a plain old F for three counts. Over the A for I, C diminished. That's the fourth beat of that measure. C diminished is C and F sharp. Make the C in measure two a C7. We're basically just repeating everything. Beat four of that measure over the B natural, D diminished, D and A flat. The F is good for one measure. Make the C a C7, C and B flat. Good for three counts. The last C of the line, put an F. Line three, cross out the F and replace it with B flat, butterfly flat, for two counts. Beat three over the A, plain old F. Second measure, you may put a seven next to the A and make it an A7, G and A. The D minor is good for one note. Beat four over the G, put a G and make it a G7 if you wish. The next measure, here we go again. One chord per note. The F chord is good where it is. Over the B flat, put a B flat. Over the C, put an F. Over the D, G minor or G minor seven. This is just a repeat of what you did twice already. The D minor is good for two counts. Make the C a C seven. Next line, the F is good for three counts. Beat four over the A, C diminished, C and F sharp. You may put a seven on the C, C and B flat for three counts. Beat four over the B natural, D diminished, D and A flat. The F is good for the whole measure. Measure four, put a C7 
making it a C and B flat for three counts. The last C of the line, plain old F. And the last line, cross out the F and replace it with B flat for two counts. Over the A, B to three, go back to your plain old F. You may put a seven on the A. The D minor is good for one note. The, over the G, put a G7. Then the next one, one note per chord, one chord per note. The F is good for one count. Over the B flat, put a B flat. Over the C, plain old F. And over the D, G minor seven. And then put a seven on your C, end with F, and you're done. Okay, it repeats and repeats and repeats a lot. So this is one that you do want to make an arrangement in order for it to really make some, some good sense. Did you notice that I did transpose? I am going to use a transpose. But let's go back to the beginning of everything. How I did I... Go ahead, go ahead, questions. On the second line, first measure on the second page. Second line, first measure is F over F. the A for three counts. Okay and beat four over the A, C diminished. Thank you. You're very welcome. Anybody else? Nope. Okay. Could you, could you repeat that one? Uh, and, and the first page, huh? first, first of all, in the first page, second line, first measure, you said oh. C7 over the word, over care for Carol. Uh -huh. And then after that, was there more? Yes. Beat okay. four over the word and put a plain yeah. old F. Okay, and that's all there. And and then uh, on the uh, third line, first measure was F, B flat, F, G, G minor seven. Yes, yes. Okay, yep. got it. Yep, and that all, that all repeats. So if, if it doesn't sound right, go, you know, I should have repeated it someplace else on the song, so you can go back and double check. If you don't have things the same in places, figure out which one is not right. Or shoot me an email. I'm more than happy to help with that. Hey, hey Don. Yeah. Can you go through that um, add it in measure again? Which one? The oh, the add it in measure. Yes. Yeah. All I did is I added in an F sharp note. What? A, let me show it. Let me show it on screen. Let's see if we can show this. I'm making this measure into two measures. Okay, so I'm putting a measure line right after that F. Now you're going to have to imagine that that F is white. If you okay. want to use your white out to make it a half note, go ahead. Um, but that's going to be a whole measure. Then you're going to make this F an F sharp. And that's going to be actually it's a dotted half note. And then you're going to add a little F. Where did I? Oh, it's right there. You're going to add an F quarter note at the end to lead into and that D7 is actually the lead-in chord for my transpose. Okay. And that's why it wasn't very smooth when I played it because stupid me used the FX instead of the no chord. Because okay. I can't because I, I can't read. <laughs> but that's gonna make a nice just something different. It's gonna transpose it up a half a step and it's gonna make it a um, actually it's a whole step. So the no chord is over the uh, F th uh, quarter note. Yes. Okay. Got yep. It. Yep. You want to play that D7 over the F sharp, then All hit right. a no chord, then do your F, and you'll and then go into your your new. You're going to have a new preset to play. So it's an F, not an F sharp. It's an F no. sharp, and that F, F sharp for over the D under the D7, but an, a plain. Uh, F. You know what? If you've changed the preset at that time, if you change the preset in the middle of that measure, that's a good call. Um, then it will automatically take that up where it's supposed to be. Oh. So, okay. Okay, so that last note in that last measure would be an F sharp or a... Uh, yeah, a I keep it an F because we're going we're gonna to transpose it. We're going to do a no chord and hit a, hit a different... Hit a different okay, reset. so but it is it is it a sharp or a natural, on the last, the last very one's last one's going to be a natural. 
Okay. It's going to be a natural because we'll, we'll already have moved our preset over, so we'll already be in transpose mode. Okay. Fine. It should sound fine. Is the transpose, is the transpose going to come right after the first, the end of the previous um, measure? or No, it's going to come after you play the F sharp. Okay. After what you, you play the F sharp and the D7. Then you're right. gonna do the. Then you're gonna hit your next preset. Actually, the no chord first. Do the no chord first, and then hit. Then hit your next preset so it doesn't sound terrible, and then play an F natural and go into your next section. What are you transposing to? I mean, you said transpose. That's common. It's common. Oh, okay. It's common. okay. That's part of the instructions. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that a, a place where they? Do a repeat from there to the end. It's all repeat. <laughs> it's an all. It's all repeat. I mean, they go back to that point where you've got the no, no chord, and then they play the all of those lines on the second page again. All of those lines on the second page are an exact replica of the first page. Yeah. It's, it's all repeat. Yeah. Don, can yeah. you show the picture again? Yep, it's not real clear. I know it's. I'm it's not not. trying to see it. Okay. All right. You're gonna put a measure in between the Fs. Okay. Okay. And then you're gonna and add a whole measure onto that. The F sharp goes to the D7, and then the. Uh, I guess. And a, then you're gonna have a no chord, and then you're gonna play uh, um, your F. Okay. All right. The no chord. And your and the no chord before you when you play the no chord, you're actually gonna go to your next preset. She okay. just wanted to see your fingernails. <laughs> I, no, my fab nails are getting redone. <laughs> oh, they look great. It's been four weeks already. They're getting long. So can you tell me what song you're playing? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're doing I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right. I was having a hard time getting in. I tried to put you on my laptop oh. and on my TV, and then I lost everything, so I had to start all over again. So I came in late, but I'm not worried about it. I'll talk You're to you. Here. You're here. You're yeah. here. Right. What was it? The bells of what? <laughs> I heard the bells on Christmas Day. Thank you. <laughs> I heard the bells on Christmas Day. <laughs> okay. Dawn. Yes? What was this? On the second page, the second line, the second measure. What was what were those notes again? That that's a C seven for three yeah. times, and on beat four, it's a D diminished. D D is in dog. D is in dog. Yes. Okay. Yep. It's everything on the first, on that second page is an exact copy of everything on the first page. So that's, if you play it over and over and over again, it's going to be very, very boring, which is why you have to change presets, do a transpose, you know, things like that. We even, I even changed the background in the middle of this. All right, so how did I start the song? I actually started the song on general presets. I'm not, I didn't have to go through any geniuses to find anything special. I'm doing everything with, with presets that you hopefully already have. Now remember, your general presets are all of these right here. All of these right here. And if you don't have on a rhythm, and you don't have on a rhythm preset, and you don't have on a category preset, these 10 sounds become general presets, or if you have an inspire or a journey and you only have eight, um, they're still general presets. So you're looking for the ones that's the one that's gonna give you chimes. And on the cabinet style instruments, they are on the classic instruments, it is number five. I actually think it's number five on the Inspire as well, but I think the chimes are on the bottom if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it's number seven. But check and see which one of your general presets gives you the chimes. And all we're going to be doing is playing. Nope. What did I miss? Oh, I'm here. And there's a choir on the bottom. There's a choir down here. Now, what notes am I playing? Um, I'm playing 
I'm playing chords F and G minor. That's all I'm playing. And the notes I'm playing are C, F, G, C. Now, you don't have to take those good of notes because I'm going to, for anybody who wants me to send you this, I will scan this over to you, okay? It's F and G minor, and then you're just playing chimes. C, F, G, C, and repeat it as many times as you want. Then I did a measure on choir. I saved that. Once I had that all set, I saved it to A1. Memorize A1 with style, and I always do with transpose as well, and then touch your memorize button again, and it will be in A1. Okay, then I worked on A2. Don't touch A2 yet. Work on A2. So what am I doing for A2? On the, on the elite classic organs, um, go to general preset 7, which is choir. Now, those of you, I think, with inspires and journeys, I think your chimes are on bottom and your choir's on top, so you don't have to do anything. You just do lower and upper. So you don't even have to do an extra preset. And what I'm doing is playing Joy to the World. Joy to the World is one of the easiest songs in the world because it goes right down the scale. Your four chords are going to be F, G minor, A minor, B flat. Now I'll, I'll flash it on the screen in a minute, but all you're going to do is play an F scale. just doing an F scale. F, E, D, C, B flat, A, G, F. So right down the line, just remember, play a B flat instead of a B natural. Go back slower. And all I'm doing is inserting that in between my chimes because I'm getting cute. <laughs> Pretty much the only reason for that. And why? Just so that you can save another preset. Once you have it, save it to A2. Memorize A2. Remember, you're on easy only. You're on a general preset, and you're on easy only so that you get the one finger chords. All right, now I'm going to go back to general preset five, which is those chimes again, easy only, but now I'm going to add duet harmony. So you have to find your harmony. Find your harmony. It's over here. And put it on duet. Duet. Why does that say different? Mine says four part. Shouldn't be. You're supposed to just add duet harmony. That could be why. It's A3. Same notes and the same chords. And then I'm just going to repeat the notes. G minor 7, C7. You're just going to sit on that C. And why C7? Because C7 is your lead in chord for the key of F, which is what we're in. So you're doing that F, G minor thing again, where you're doing bing, 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 bing. We're just doing that with a duet. And then when you're done playing the bing, bings as many times as you want, then you're just going to do these very slowly. C, play a G minor chord. C, play a G minor 7. Gong the C again on a C7. And gong the C one last time on a C7. And then save that to preset three. Say, I'll, I'll, anybody who wants one of these, you know, like yes, please. shoot me an email. You don't have to take the notes. You don't need this to play the song. It's just that it's going to help you find, I want you to look for your general presets. What are in your general presets? You've got some fabulous sounds in your general presets that you could use, especially for Christmas. How often do we get a chance to use those chimes? How often do we get a chance to use this spectacular choir? 
I mean, it's beautiful. So Christmas time is a wonderful time to take a look at what are in your general presets. It's also a good time to take a look at what's in Bank D, or if you've got the Journey, the um, Fanfare, or the Inspire, you're going to look at your category Symphonic. Basically, it's the same category, Symphonic. Category D is all your orchestrals, and you're going to get some beautiful things like, like uh, violin is number two, D2. On the symphonic, I can't remember exactly which number it is, but find it. Find where that is. But the first thing we need to do is now we need to choose a rhythm. So A4 is where we're actually going to start playing the song. So far, what do we have? So far, we just have the easy button, and we have some chimes. Then we have the choir singing Joy to the World. They must be in the church already singing. Then the church bells are still going. you're going to do a no chord. Before you do anything else, you're going to do a no chord. So if you wanted to put right no chord, I wrote no chord at the beginning of my song. Actually, there is one. It's already there. So what am I going to do to start the song? I am using the classic Baroque. Classic Baroque at 80 beats per minute. So you want to slow it down. Always work left to right. Slow it down. The lower, you're going to lower your lower volume. I want you to come over to your graphic mixer, and I want you to see where your volumes are. Basically, a graphic mixer is nothing more than volumes. So you're going to find the lower volume. I want everybody to look at their instruments. What is the lower? The lower is the lower chord sound. So it is the sound you get when you play one of your single finger chords. When you get that, hmm, that's your lower volume. You're going to find it. You're going to lower it down a little bit. You're also going to find your drums volume. That's in a separate place. You're going to lower your drums volume down a little bit. Not, you don't want to take them out. You just want to lower them just a hair. And then you're going to go to bank D or symphonic, depending on if you've got the E organs or the A organs. And you are going to find the preset that has violin. Violin. And on A organs, it's number two. D2 is violin. And a cello on the bottom. Well, we're not playing the cello. We're just going to use the violin. But that's how I started this. So I'm actually starting this with this is the Baroque. And I have now the D bank with the violin. Okay. And how far are we going to play that? We're going to play that for line one, line two, line three. You know what? I'll put those in. Hold on. Let's save this first. Make sure you now, if you've got it, you save it. It's going into A4. Memorize. A4, with style, with transpose, turn your memorize button off, and now you've got that in A4. How long are you going to play it? I heard the bells on Christmas Day. They're old, familiar, second line carols play. And wild and sweet, the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Now I want you to put a little bird's eye over that C7 chord with an FX. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Back up. You're going to stop it at wild and sweet, the words repeat. 
I know I'm messing you all up today, big time. And then between repeat and of, that's where your new rhythm is going to, your new preset's going to start. So you're going to play a four for this line. You're going to play a four for the second line up to here. And you're just going to hit A, the next, we haven't, don't hit it yet because we're not there. We haven't designed it yet. But that's where we're going to put the next preset. But don't hit it here yet because we haven't designed it yet. Okay, so how do we design A5? We're going to up the lower. So again, this is just so you can find where your buttons are. Go back over to your graphic mixer. Look at your lower. Up it a little bit. And I actually have told you exactly where. Take your drums volume, put it all the way back to the top. Now we're going to pick a different preset in bank D or symphonic, depending on which organ you have. And you're looking for the chamber orchestra. In the A organs, it will be number six, the chamber orchestra, which is the one I like to call my Titanic orchestra. Because if you remember the chamber orchestra that kept on playing, the quartet that kept on playing, even as the Titanic is sinking slowly into the sea. I know, it's pretty morbid. <laughs> and I am adding an upper tab. Now these tabs on your upper here, all of these tabs for most of your instruments are for the upper keyboard. There are some of them that will say, you'll have an up extra one that'll said, put your tabs down to here. But those are the aria, the marquee, the grand marquee, um, possibly the inspire. I can't remember if the inspire, you can also put it down here. But your tabs, for the most part, your upper tabs go to the upper organ. And what you're going to do is you are going to add upper tab vocal ensemble. I'm I want you to find all these things that your organ has. That's the whole idea of this exercise. And hit that. Then you're going to put that, you can play it if you want. Then you're going to put it into A5. Memorize A5 with style, with transpose. Turn your memorize button off and there it will be. All ready for you to go. And how far am I going to play it? That's actually a short one. You're going to play that one from Of Peace on Earth, Goodwill to Men. And that's it. Very short one. So you're going to start it right there. So you've got to hit it fast. For those of you that put it in your feet, that's where you would want to kick it. Then we're going to play Peace on Earth, Goodwill to Men. And you're going to put a little bird's eye over that C7 and an FX, because you're going to add a whole nother measure. You can play a whole extra measure if you want, and that's where we're going to do the next preset. Don't touch the next preset yet. We haven't designed it, but that's where you're going to put A6. Okay, so how do you design A6? A6, you're going to edit the style. Ooh, okay. How do I edit the style, and why would I want to do that? When you edit the style, you touch the top of the screen, and you get these white lines that go across. I don't know if you can see that. I've got a glare today. I've got, I've got all these. It's the genie, the orc plus one, orc plus two, and then it tells me all these things. It's everything that is not your drums, your bass, or your lower chord, all that inside stuff. Well, what can I do to edit my style I could turn some of these off. I could change the sounds and I can change the volumes. So those are things. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go to the genie and I'm going to change the sound. It says harpsichord. I'm going to touch it. I'm going to turn it blue and then I'm going to go to my scroll and I'm going to change it to a piano. And so you just scroll, scroll, scroll and it's going to change it to a piano. Now, it's not going to do anything special. It's going to do exactly what the harpsichord was doing. The pattern stays the same. We're just flipping the sound so that we'll now have 
a piano sound instead of a harpsichord. So let's just listen to backgrounds. Here it is, originally. Hear that harpsichord? When I change it, it's gonna sound like this. Hear the piano? Harpsichord? Piano. The piano's doing the same thing the harps harpsichord was. It's just making it a little fresher by changing the sound. You could put in any sound that you want. And then orchestra plus three says brass, and I'm gonna touch orchestra plus three, and it's gonna say off. Now why am I doing this? I want you to find out what everything on your organ can do. That's all I'm doing. You may say, I hate her arrangement, this is terrible. But if it gets you to push the buttons and touch your screen and change things so you can start making your own arrangements, that's a wonderful thing. That's what we're doing this for. All right, so what else are we doing? Oh, we're gonna find the drum variation. Find the drum variation. What's that gonna do? It's gonna change my drummer so that my drummer, who is doing this, let's turn off everything here. Let's turn. He's just kind of doing a tip. I'm gonna put drum variation on. Aha, now I have more stuff going on in my drums. And again, that just keeps my background fresh. It keeps my background fresh. It just changes it up a little bit so it's not so boring because this song can be very boring. It's a beautiful song, but if you don't change things up every so often, it is going to just lay there because it repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats, same thing. So when you have that, then you're going to save that to A6. Memorize A6 with style, with transpose, turn your memorize button off, and now you have A6. How far am I gonna play A6? Let's see. We're gonna start A6 on the third line. See where I have it? Oh. Third line, A6. Now we're gonna play the rest of line three. We're gonna play all of this line, you're gonna go to the next page and you're gonna play it all the way through that top line to the D7. Then you're gonna hit a no chord. You're gonna change the preset to A7. I wrote A7 down here. You probably should put A7. Yes, yeah, so you can't, I, it got cut off. I put A7 here. You probably should have put A7 right after the no chord. No chord, A7, and then play that F. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up transposing that whole next section. But we're gonna do it with a preset instead of the transpose. All right, so how, what are we gonna do for A7? Don't touch A7 yet. We have to design it first. So we're on A6. Now we're gonna do some stuff. We're gonna change the rhythm. So you're either going to find your romantic pianist or your soft and easy, smooth piano 4-4 four four, or your smooth pianist. And we're gonna transpose up two to the key of D because we're actually going into the key of G. We're not gonna play the key of G, we're gonna play the key of F, but it's gonna sound like G. The D7 that we just played at the top of the page, that we just played up here, that D7 is the lead-in chord for the new key, okay? That's what that is. It's the, it's the lead-in chord, that D7, with the F sharp. And when we do a note chord and hit the next preset, it's already gonna be up to in the new key. So we just continue playing it in the key of F like we're used to, but the sound is going to be the key of G. But don't transpose it to G, transpose it up to, and it's going to say D in your window. 
Okay, now this is where transpose can get very tricky. I mean, we're playing in the key of F. And if we want to transpose to the key of G, we don't just transpose and put G in the window. You don't want to do that. It's all about distances. How far is the key of G from the key of F? Two keys. F, F sharp, G. So in order for me to go from the key of F to transpose it to the key of G, I have to transpose up two notches, which means it's going to show in your window the key of D. Are you confused? It's all about the distances. Transposing can be very confusing. But just find your transpose, follow the instructions, go up to, it's going to say D in the window. You're going to be playing an F, but it's going to sound like it's in G. It's <laughs> all right, so we've changed the rhythm now. We've changed the rhythm to either smooth piano 4-4 four four or pianist romantic piano. We've transposed up. Now we're going to find category presets. Category presets. So you're going to go to more and you're going to find bells. And bells number nine gives you bells with harmony. AOC bells. And I want you to find a button that says upper octave orc solo. Oh my God, what is that? Well, what that does is it takes anything that's in your orchestral or solo, meaning if you're on the marquee or the inspire or the aria, it's going to be any of your sounds. Any of these sounds that are here, if you're on an A organ or an SU organ, it's any reds and blues. And it's going to change that sound, whatever's there, down or up an octave. It's going to change the octaves. Okay. How does that actually work? Well, right now I've got bells harmony on, and I've got bells in the tabs, and I've got bells in the orchestral, and... All right, now if I hit the upper octave or solo, down one, see what it did? It left my high one up and it brought my other one down. It brought my orchestral bell down. Back to normal. If I hit down, upper octave orc solo, I want to go down one. Hear the difference? What happens if I go down two? Hear what it did? Okay, we're only going to go down one, but that's... There's no reason to do that except you're going to learn what that is. So if you've got something in your arrangement that sounds too high to you, you can bring it down by going to upper octave or solo. Everything that's in your tabs that goes to this will stay the same. It won't drop your tabs like organ sounds or string sounds or upper genius. It's only going to change these sounds here, reds and blues or all your sounds. And Which you can arrow make is that? The one? Part. Is, it the, is it the arrow going? Down. You're going to do the arrow down, one, to green. If you make it go up, it's just going to make it even higher pitched. Yeah, what I meant is I don't quite follow you. There's two arrows. There's I two need. arrows, yeah. So I want to hit the one to the left? Hit the one to the left where the arrow's okay. going. Arrow points down. Okay, 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 okay. You turn it green, it goes down an octave. You turn it red, it goes down two octaves. Oh, red, red is two. Uh-huh. You've probably never seen that this before. This is, this is actually a pretty cool button. So the arrangement might, might not be anything that you really care about, but doing the arrangement will help you learn where all these buttons are on your instrument. That is the whole idea of this exercise. Okay, so if I've done that now, and I can play it if I want, then I can memorize it. I'm memorizing it to A7. So you always work off the previous one. Once I have everything done, then I go memorize A7 with style and absolutely with transpose, because we just transposed it up to. And then you touch your memorize button, turn it off, and it makes everything good. 
Now we're there for A7. How far are we going to play A7? Well, we're going to start it on that F, that F that we wrote in here. You're going to do a note chord. You're going to put on A7, then play the F, and then go into your chord on the second line, and it will sound like you're playing it in the key of G. Pretty cool, huh? All right, you're going to play it all of line two, all of line three, actually most of line three, and over that C7, put another, put another one of those guys, a fermata. Why? Because then you can use your fill-in for make a whole extra measure, then do A8. Don't touch A8 yet. We're not there. We haven't designed it yet, but that's where it, write it in because that's where it's going to start. And then you're going to play that F pickup note and go into the ending. Okay, so how do I design the last one? You should be either on Romantic Pianist or Soft and Easy Piano or whatever, Smooth Piano 4-4, whichever one you chose. Now you're going to go over here and find the altar style. Oh my, what's the altar style? The altar style. The altar style changes the background so that instead of sounding like this, the altar style makes it sound like this. Now this one didn't change all that much. I think the romantic piano, which this one doesn't have, the, the romantic piano changes pretty drastically. But add the altar style. Why? I want you to find out where it is and I want you to try it on several different rhythms and see what does it do? It tweaks your background just a little bit. It tweaks your background. In some cases, it tweaks your background a lot. But I just want you to find out, where is my altar style? And what does it do? Listen for it and check to see what it does. Now, you're also going to find an upper string tab, and you're going to put on upper strings eight. Well, how is that going to change my sound? I've got these bells going on. And if I add upper string tab eight, it's going to give me, it's going to pad that bell sound with some strings. That's one of my favorite tricks to do for Christmas. And I'm going to go back to my upper octave orchestra solo, and I'm going to put it back to normal. Just put it back so that no lights are on. Put it back to normal. Why? It's very subtle, but so that you know what it does. That's the whole reason for doing it. And that is the very last thing that we're going to do. Now, if you've done that, you're going to save that to A8. Memorize A8 with style, with transpose. Turn your memorize button off, and there you have it. And then you play that to the end. And at the end, you're just going to play with peace on earth, goodwill to men, you're just going to slow down those last two measures as slow as you want. All right. So this time I'm going to play it, and hopefully I won't mess up where I messed up before. A1 is your nice chimes.
pose that time? Because I hit the no chord in the right spot. <laughs> Any questions? We are over time, but I, I, I just wanted you to get an, a taste of what does my organ do? What does my organ do? Now, if you've got some questions about this or about your instrument, email me. Um, we can set up an appointment and get together and, and try some stuff. Um, do you want to do more stuff like this, or do you want to go back to doing just kind of like a, an easy arrangement next week? Oh, my head is spinning. <laughs> <laughs> my words, exactly. <laughs> This was a tough I'm thinking, what do these kids do that have to go to school online at home? <laughs> this this was a tougher assignment, but this you you guys asked me for something that was similar to Christmas it's, and Dixie, but this is the only reason to do those, and it takes a long time to put those together, but it gets you used to what's on your instrument. It gets you pushing the buttons, and that's what I want you to do on this one. Okay. <laughs> It was want, good, Dawn. Do yeah, it again. I want to tell you, Dawn, I recognize the work that you put into that, and you did an awesome job. You are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> no, this, is, this is not my favorite arrangement, believe me, but but I it works with it works for all the different things that I wanted yes, to show. Dawn, this is Ken. Yes. Uh, I'd like to say uh, thanks to JR for all the years that he was in World War II. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very I don't know nice, if yes. Anne is listening or not. Yes, she yeah. is. Yep. Good. Yep. Make sure you tell him that. I'm sure he hey, just heard that doing? from you, and that was a wonderful, wonderful thing to say. Yep. Yeah. It is yeah, thank work. you. Merry Christmas. Yes, Thanks, Merry. We love you, Jay. Yeah. You we want to do more of this? You want to make it a little easier next no, week? No, no, no. Oh. Go for it. Oh. Go for it. John, John could Silver you just bells. mention the places where you put? We got the introduction, and then you begin with A4 in the huh? beginning uh, under I Heard the Bells. Uh -huh. Then where where did you insert A5, A6? Mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, yep. You know, just this you know what, Barbie, I'm just, I'm going to. I'm going to scan this to you. I'm just going to scan everything to yeah. you so you've got it. Okay. If you can yeah. All right. read this, okay. yeah. if you could do okay. that. Because okay. we have over time. Uh, yes. Could you scan it to me as well? Just send me an email because. What I, is your email? I don't know your email. Ah, 5028 at FletcherMusic.com. 5028 at FletcherMusic.com. It all comes to the store and I answer all the emails. Um, it's it's just so wonderful to um, yeah that would be helpful to have just all to you guys in class yep and y thank you for letting me push you. <laughs> That's all well, right. I'm new to your I'm new to your class and I really appreciate ah. all your your. Okay. That's oh, great. Sure. Thank you. Just just to know where all those buttons are, then they can <laughs> they that's, do. That's the only reason we're doing this is so that you yeah. look at your organ and say where can I find that on mine, and if you can't find it on yours. Email me, call me, whatever you need to do. Um, if you need an appointment, we can sit down together either on Zoom or um, in the store. Uh, whatever you want to do, I'm here to help and uh, get you to learn what you have. You know why we? Do you know why we do that? By the way, do you know why we want you to learn all the buttons on your instrument? For organs. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yes, ma'am. So that the next time, so that the next time we say. Penny, I want you to look at your next organ. You can't tell me, but I don't know all the buttons on this one yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so what's what's a, the most wonderful thing is that once you learn them on one organ, it goes to your next instrument. You know, this, this organ is in the next organ, and it, it, just, it just goes on and on. It's just a wonderful thing. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's class. Thank you so much. Yeah. If you need fingering, again, we don't have enough time for that today. Shoot me an email, and uh, I'd be more than happy to scan the song over to you. So, love you guys, and we're next, week's week's song. Song. Next, week's next week's song. Don't know yet. I haven't oh. chosen it yet. <laughs> Friday. Friday have is some, have a good day. Day. If you have some suggestions, go ahead and uh, email me that too. But I, I have a few things in the in in the files, and so I'll I'll check and see what I got.
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Marianne. Marianne, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.